Hello and welcome, I'm Raziel and this is Getting Started Month and it's almost over, I've only got a couple of days left to go and today I'm going to talk about starting a new game. I've already done starting a second army and it kind of latches onto that and it's kind of interesting when you do go into a new game because it's completely new territory for you. You may go with something or a genre that you happen to like, you might just continue that sci-fi dystopian stuff or you might just go completely the other way and you might go from sci-fi to fantasy. There is, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, there is so much choice within wargaming, it would be very hard for you not to find something that you could really enjoy. You know, the lore rise, the game rise, how it plays, all of that. It's going to be so hard to find something that you do not like or you absolutely hate, you know. But it's going to be very easy for you to find something that you're going to get really into. As I've, I, I'm a big fan of Wild West Exodus, I say this a lot in my videos because the whole lore and everything just appeals to me. Alternate timeline, check. Aliens versus cowboys, check. Weird stuff happening in South Af in the South Pole, check. You know, all that sort of really cool cryptids and UFOs, the paranormal stuff. It really appeals to me. But when you're starting a new game, there's kind of two ways of doing this, and it does. Diff, 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 diff. It is different between the two. I just couldn't say different at the time. Diff, if we, oh, damn it, I'm not going to try it anymore. Anyway, so, and if you're being introduced into a game by a friend, you can actually take that as a good on. I'm not, I'm, you know, they actually respect you to they want to try something new with you, and it's great. And you go, you don't really have to do much legwork, you might not even have to buy an army straight away. Personally, if I want to get someone into a new game, I tend to make sure I have more than one army. So when they do play the new game, I have given them an army to choose from. And I stick as a moral guideline is I tell them the armies I have, such as if I'm introducing someone into Wild West Exodus, like I said, I've got, well, I've got several Warrior Nation posses, I've got Enlightened posses, I've got the Crown posse, I've got a Union posse. So they have a choice to say, okay, this one sort of I fancy, and you go, okay, and you tell them the army you're going to choose. But you give them the first choice of the army. If they don't have a second army, and you go, do you know what, I'll buy a small army, we'll play a small game, and we'll see how it goes. You know, don't spend too much. Spend about 50, 60 quid on your army. And to be honest with you, most games, you're going to be able to get a decent game out of it for 50, 60 quid. I know it sounds weird, but uh, say war say wargaming is quite expensive, but the starting point is pretty low. I mean, I think the most I really have had to spend on a brand new army is a uh, hundred pounds, and obviously that was for a bit full starting army. So, so that's the one way, and it's kind of pretty much the easiest way because they're going to teach you the rules, they're going to teach you everything you need to know, and you, you just get into a new game. The other way of getting into a new game is by just you know talk, looking around the internet and trying to find something new to paint or build. That is what I did. Honestly, I was kind of, you know, kind of bored of painting the same things for from Games Workshop, so I tried looking for something new to build and paint. So I found Wild West Exodus, and that's how I got into it. So that's one way. And so that's how you get into your game. Okay, you found something new you want to play, but it's absolutely brand new territory to you. A lot of games have very different rules. They have the basic same stat lines, which never really diff, you know, not really different. I will not be able to say that word during this entire video, though I happen to use it a lot in my lexicon, or my vocabulary. And, you know, you just find it and you've got to read the rules, which I find enjoyable anyway. And learn the, what the models are like to build, paint, and you know how they're used, etc. You, you, you've got this whole new way of playing, but you've got to learn. It's kind of like playing like if you've got a games console, you're just like going from a RPG to a first person shooter where there's different rules you've got to sort of abide by which count for both games. Same thing applies here. And then when then you've got to choose someone to play with, and as I said, I tend to have two different armies when I want to get someone into a game because, you know, I want them to play and I wanna have fun. I don't want them to spend money on a game when they might not enjoy, but I do. So having a second force tends to help people get into a game with you. But you also need to know the rules to uh, 
very high degree. You cannot just be like, um, 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 and keep checking the rules. Have the data sheet and the rules books with you because if they have any questions, you can just show them, look, here it is, and you can teach them what it means. So you always aid the new person into your game. Buying this new army for the game, however, is different because the, the thing is with this one is how different the prices range from game to game. I wish this was wrong, but it tends to be very, very true. You can get a tank for bolt action for twenty pounds, and you can get like a squad of men for a different a game of ten men for the same price. So you kind of need to budget differently and how much you need. So you still, I would still go by the free box rule. You know, buy free boxes. You end up probably saving some money anyway from a previous game, or you might be spending more. But also stick to your budget as well. So do those two things, and. If maybe it's not just the game itself you want to change, like you're not a big fan of big team, big game, big battle games, such as 40k or um, Kings of War. You know you want to play a skirmish game. Now, one way if you want to go into a skirmish game, one way to do this is just basically just get the rules for the skirmish game and play them. Because most of likely, most often than not, I should say, the skirmish game allows you to use the other get other models. It is fine. Conquest is the one of the best that does this. They actually tend to pack their big starter armies with two rule books or two quick reference sheets, so you can use that. You can use the new both. You have all the rules with you already, so it's no big deal. But yes, just can. But go to if you if you're just thinking about changing from like one game, just try and stay in the same company. Like if you're going to Mantic, you're going from Kings of War to Firefight. Because you kind of know how the models work, you have a good idea how they actually make rules and how their rules work, and you are going to, it's more of a smaller step than if you're going from Kings of War to World of Exodus, then to Conquest, because each one is very different. But if you go from Kings of uh, Firefight to Dead Zone, you're going to kind of know what the models are like and what the rules are going to be like. Same with Conquest. So. If you're going to just go from basically one type of game to a different, I would stick within the same company. But you, you know, that's just what I would say. That's what I would suggest, and that's what I actually do. I, I'm not one of these people that goes do as I say, but not do as I do. I, whatever I say on these videos is something I actually do do. <laughs> do you do again? Anyway, and that's it for this video. I'm starting a new game. I hope you enjoyed this. This was actually a fun one to do because. I play many different games and I do enjoy starting a new game, just trying out, making these new models, painting the new models, it's all great and fun to me. And then actually getting to play them, though they might be less popular, is even better because you actually get to play a game you may actually have more love for than the more popular game. And that's just about it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching once again and I hope you all have a good time and have a good day. And I'll see you in the next one. And there is, of course, uh, Raylan Games. If you wish to save money on your wargaming, up to 20% off and free delivery up to £20. And they have all sorts of games there. It's where I get all my models. I'm not even joking. I buy all my models from that place now. Even my Lego now comes from there. <laughs> I'm not joking. So, yeah, I, I recommend them because I use them. I would never recommend anything I didn't, re I didn't particularly use or was you know actually I agreed with same with Forbidden Planet it's a decent comic shop if you like geeky merchandise and comics that's your place to stop and it's actually pretty cool they are fun friendly staff they actually have stores UK wide as well that's Forbidden Planet there's also Forbidden Planet International but I do Forbidden Planet and then there is my merchandise itself t-shirts cups well travel mugs bags and stickers and what everyone else does with all my artwork some digital some hand-drawn talking about hand-drawn there's my comics all hand-drawn no digital no ai and written by me okay the writing is done by like the speech bubbles is obviously typed in uh okay just to be honest if you want to see little red riding hood go ham on some cyborg werewolves <laughs> with lovecraftian monsters inside them i was probably high when i wrote that story there's also the horror anthology as well, which is pretty cool. There's a fantasy story in there, which needs to be finished. Uh, no, it is actually finished. I just got to write, actually just do the last three parts. 
and have them drawn up. Unfortunately, for the past couple of years, I've been super busy and I've not really had time to finish it. I really wish I did. There's also uh, Skyforge, never forget Skyforge, good friend of mine. Give him a click. Let's get him up in that algorithm on Google. And finally, Patreon because business. Bye bye.